Hi, this is Shadi. Mitsuya Maeda is often credited for his contribution to martial arts. Maeda taught and fought not only in America, but in Europe as well. He fought in both judo and wrestling. But many do not realize that if it wasn't for Tomita, a lot of the Western history of martial arts would not be the same. In the book, The Founding of Jiu-Jitsu and Judo in America, George Rago compiles all the historical events regarding all the legendary grapplers that came to America to teach and fight. The Tomita and Maeda Chronicles are well detailed so we can fully understand their journey and what they left behind. The book can be found in the description below. Tsunejiro Tomita, one of the four guardians of the Kodokan, not many know this, but Tomita, although not a fighter at heart, he defeated one of the most feared jujutsuka in Japan, Hanske Nakamura, in the famous 1884 battle when the Kodokan was still solidifying its place as the best school in Japan. Tomita threw and strangled Nakamura in a decisive manner. He and Maeda toured the West almost like comedians, performing demonstrations in front of university crowds and the military. Tomita had mixed results during these tours. One example took place on February 20th, 1905, after a successful demonstration in Princeton University just four days earlier, where Maeda and Tomita threw their challengers. Next, Tomita and his team performed in front of a military academy in West Point. Maeda handled himself well, however, it did not go well for Tomita. Tomita was pinned three times on his back. The next day, an article came out describing the event. It is easy to theorize that this particular event shaped the preference of Americans, choosing wrestling over judo. This defeat did not set them back though. They continued to tour and accepting challenges. On April 5th, 1905, during a Broadway demonstration, Tomita made arguably the greatest declaration in martial arts history. He said, Jiu-Jitsu is an almost extinct art and a savage one that were better extinct. The real art of self-defense is Judo. Jujutsu was developed 350 years ago at a time where there was tribal warfare in Japan. Then a man with a long sword and a man with no sword would meet in the streets. And out of their undying hatred for one another, tribally speaking, it became necessary for the man with no sword to learn a few tricks for dislocating the joints of his enemy, choking him and rendering him unconscious etc. On that day, the clear distinction between an art of maiming and fighting and a path of life was forged. Tomita, the first student of the Kodokan, the first black belt and Kano's training partner, saw life differently. Tomita understood that the goal of judo is not only self-defense, but also to give back to society. Maeda was young at the time, he was eager to fight and curious to discover the world. Tomita was from another generation and saw life in a different light. He was a technician, an educator, and knew self-defense, not a challenger, just like his teacher, Shigoro Kano. He saw fighting as a necessity from time to time, but not the end goal of judo. Yamashita was a fighter and a brawler. He went to prison for it and even challenged Kano Shihan. Tomita was different. He saw the human value in these teachings and went beyond the fighting, a concept that is still difficult to grasp even until this day. And thus, that is how he and Kano changed the world of martial arts forever. To know more about the Japanese pioneers that went to the West, check out the founding of Jujutsu and Judo in America in the description below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening. Please like this video if you found it informative. It's the easiest way to support me.
and consider supporting me on Patreon to keep this content going and evolving. Thank you.